Hello. Just leaving Chilwell Valley. Look at the rubbish everywhere. Some dirty bastards After about. 900 feet, turn left. Right, so I'm on the docks at two o'clock. Box off, box on, doesn't appear to be much of a queue at the moment down there. Oh, what is this beep now? Not much to see. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Not much to see, but there is something to say. Um, I'm 
job for tomorrow, Colville, 10.30. So we're going under the key, getting the box off, box on, 20 foot on. And then we're going up to Colville, uh, tip, and then uh, back down to Southampton again. So, easy run. That'll be it for the day. Depends how long it takes for them to unload. It's a heavy box. By the looks of it. So yeah, uh, back to the uh, no back um, under the key, box off, box on, back to the yard, dump the trailer into uh, the Merck dealers. Back to the yard, dump the van, get my car, go home. So they've turned around to me and said, can't take the van home anymore for some spurious reason, which makes no sense whatsoever. I said that's fine. Um, but as I'm going home, and I'm a tramper, and I should be staying in the truck, then uh, my booking time is from when I get home, from when I, I'm putting a manual entry in until I get home, because that's where I'm going to be finishing work tonight. I know that's probably not strictly the correct thing to do, but I don't need to do that. So I'll be back to the yard. But I'm a tramper, I live an hour away from the office, from the yard. I'm not spending two hours of my downtime travelling, so uh, that's their issue. Normally I always take the, yep, to take the van home. He said, oh, it's nothing to do with insurance. I said, how could it be a problem if I was an owner-operator? And uh, I lived in New Milton. And uh, I'd be taking the van back to where I go, wouldn't it? Back to my yard in New Milton, because that's the nearest Southampton truck dealers. How's that work then? It's rubbish, isn't it? Five, uh, but I just do as they say, because I just can't be asked to argue. I just cannot be bothered with it. There's no reasoning with mints, is there? to have the tow bar fitted to the Range Rover. 695 quid. That's not a Range, that's not, um, Range right Rover either. Right that's a, and take the third uh, a local uh, tow bar centre. They put one on the ML. That was only about four or five hundred quid. Yeah, 695. Now I do have an option on a Range... Ooh, dear, 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 dear. I do have an option on a. I do have an option on a Range Rover tow bar that will fit my Range Rover. Take the exit A34. So I've got a quote for just fitting only high supply. So as long as this tow bar is less than 250 quid, I will buy the tow bar myself. 
It's off a mate, so it depends on how much he wants for it. If he wants more than 250 quid for it, then um, I may as well not bother. So that's that. What else has happened? A few more stars have aligned. For the short term goals, so that's good. What is going on down here? Entirely sure. Looks like he's driving down that, what is what sort of the hard shoulder, really? Is he meant to be doing that? He's gone in, he was. Himself a puncture, yeah. Gorgeous Kira is not feeling it today. I spoke to her. Yeah, she's not feeling it. I'll probably talk more about it tomorrow. So I'm glad I'm going home tonight, actually. The bit of me feels like going, ah, fuck it, I'll just take the rest of the week off. I can't, I can't be asked. I cannot be asked. Relatively easy job tomorrow. So. Spent all that money on a pavement there. Who the fuck walks up and down there? No one. You know? Very few people. I don't think the footpath goes any... Well, does it carry on going down here? Well, I don't know. Might do, I suppose. I think it does, look. So it's a safer place to cycle, I suppose, but... So, yeah, anyway, Gorgeous Kira is Kira's not, not feeling it, so... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that tomorrow, but it needs a little bit of explaining and... Uh, there's a reason behind it. Oh, we've had to, we're having a bit of rust. There's a there's a bit of rust on the tailgate. And, uh, we thought we'd get it done, but he's. <laughs> It's our mate who's doing it, you know, he's got a body shop. So we know we're getting not getting stitched up. So he's taking the pound and he said there's a little bit more rust than he thought, so um, it's 500 quid. We're getting a, the tailgate completely redone. Now I know my, my mate who's got a Range Rover folk has had a similar problem and it cost him over two grand. So 500 quid is, a, is a, an expensive fix. So I'm happy with that. And that goes in, that's what well, that's in now. So uh, that's in now, and it'll be ready to pick up on Friday, so that'll be good. And yes, yeah, so that's the that's in the, the Range Rovers in the body shop. My stars are aligning, I've got to do something else. Because we've got short term goals and long term goals. So this is a short term goal that I'm talking about now, but I can't talk about it now because I can't.
We only talk about it when it happens. And that might not actually come to fruition until later on in the year. But there's a few hurdles that we have to jump over to make that happen. So uh, we'll see what happens. supposed to be which is on the docks at about ten past two something like that. Yeah ten past two. Yeah, that's good. And we just go from there. So Southbound. Yeah. Can't possibly be tired. Slept really well last night. Fair bit of sleep involved. I'm sure, I was asleep for about half eight. Got at least eight hours sleep. About eight, actually. Seven hours forty-eight, to be precise. He's going along, texting. Wanker. phone anyway, I'm holding the phone up and reading it. Come on, little Skoda, come on, come on. Well done, for not panicking. Features all later because there's uh, not much going on here. It's, it's, it's just the A34. Speeches all later. Hello. She's a bit on the heavy side. It's only a 20 footer.
heading back to the yard, dump the trailer, get this down to the, uh, the dealership. Right, that's about it really. I'll speak to you all uh, tomorrow once I've done some uh, uh, collecting of the truck and all that malarkey. I'll speak to you all later on. Hello! Uh, a little bit of fuck with me this morning. Uh, just uh, down to the. Come back to the yard, pick the van up. Has he seen me? Pick the van up down to the dealers but I'd pick another lad up as well thankfully he was there waiting for me let's pick another lad, take him down there pick my truck up there was a bit of shifting and shunting to get down when I got there um, and then I had to do my checks back to the yard, refuel hook up, sort my shit out have an hour and um, get ready to go so yeah, so it's now 10 past 7, it's 12 degrees, traffic's building up so I'm going to go a different way, and I'm still in my shorts, because it's bloody getting warmer isn't it, it's getting warmer, and I've got heavy box on, come on, what are you doing? getting anywhere quick today. I suspect I'm going to be late. At the end of the road, turn right Normandy Way. Turn right. That's not Mr. OCD driving that truck. What's he dropping out of there? Is he chucking diesel out? So, let me go. You. Gentlemen on the corners. Turn the heat down. Go get some coffee inside me. So last night when I got home, oh yeah, but by the time I got home, which was nearly, well it's gone six o'clock last night by the time I got home, just took forever, and we booked our, because we're taking the caravan to uh, Scotland, <coughs> we booked the campsite. Cross the roundabout and take the first exit, Normandy Way. And we're staying on... Uh, the south side or south shore of Loch Ness. And a lovely campsite by the looks of it. Cross the roundabout and take the first exit. So that looks nice and that gives us a fairly central position for anywhere that we want to go. Really looking forward to it. She's heavy, all right. After a quarter of a mile, get right on the roundabout and take the second exit, Barry Road. Well, as I've always already been down the uh, uh, seasick, 
get down the road by um, right where all the traffic and take the second exit. Where all the traffic backs up. I already know it's backing up already, so uh, clanking. Don't like it when it clanks. It's the box flexing in the mounts. And I've got no idea how this uh, load is uh, loaded, obviously, it's heavy. Could be all on one side, could be right double down the middle, may not be a positive fit, no idea. So uh, you just got to be, um, you got to be gentle with it. It's a bit like, I suppose the easiest way to say it, it's like the egg and spoon race. Do you know what I mean? You can go fast in a straight line, but as soon as you go around a corner, you I hope the egg doesn't roll off. Well, that's a bit like a really heavy 20 foot box. Oh, and you could have a blowout and tip over. Okay, so as far as short term goals are concerned, we had another star aligned last night, so uh, that was good. Oh, well. Beautiful day though, it's the best day so far this week. So it's uh, 7, 15, 11 degrees, loving it. So I suspect I'll be back in the yard tonight, so hopefully I'll get a sea view, which would be nice. Five nights out last week, and I've requested an early finish on Friday. <laughs> Let's see if that happens, eh? After a quarter of a mile, turn right, A326, Marchwood Bypass. Let's see if that happens. Unusual to see them loaded up with something other than cars. What's he got on there? MOT, ah, of course it is. It needs to be loaded for MOT, doesn't it? Never thought of that. I've never seen it before. But yeah. Because they're their own specific trailers, aren't they? It's not like ours where they just shove another trailer on the back. Left, I reckon. After 900 feet, go right on the roundabout and take the second exit. No, go left. After 900 feet, go right on the roundabout and take the second exit. A35, <laughs> Totten Bypass. Save five minutes by going left. Go left. Go right on the roundabout and take the second exit. A whole load of roundabouts to go through now. 
up to the motorway and then I'll uh, let you get on with the rest of your day. You can go make a cup of tea, take a dog for a walk. I did, <laughs> I think. I think it was uh, Ian and Tony. I think. I think. I think I got. I think I remember. Well, probably not. Who knows? And um, as me, as me moaning at the, I get aches and pains at, at 56. And <laughs> I can't remember. But one of them. One of the boys said, "Oh mate, you won. You wait till you get the way you won." <laughs> the other lad goes, "Oh mate, you see, I'm five years your senior." <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear. Thanks for watching. Thanks for wa thanks for watching. <laughs> and, and and making me feel bad <laughs> complaining at 56 about aches and pains. Yeah. I'll try not to complain After again because that sort of puts it in the perspective a little bit, doesn't it? You know? Take the second exit, A326. <clears throat> oh my word. It's gonna oh I can't there's no way I'm gonna be able to stop this bad boy. <laughs> Only doing 35. Oh, look at the traffic going up here. I thought they said it was five right minutes quicker. And take the second exit, A326. Nice and gentle, man, man, man. They said they lied to me, I think. I think Tom Tom lied. Wouldn't be the After first time, mile, would it? Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Would it? You you lie. You didn't tell me this was going to be here. All right, he's going to let me out. Anybody going to let me out? I think the white car behind me's letting me out. Oh, it's warm. After 500 feet, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A326. Yeah. Anyway, I think I'll leave you here because this is just traffic. We could play the game of how many people are on their phones. Should we do that? Just up to the end of this roundabout. Let's have a look. So that's 500. What did she say? 500 meters or 500 yards? It's 500 something. I don't know whether I'm in yards or meters. Yards, I think. Let's have a look. Well, he's eating a pack of crisps. Does that count? Probably not. Because I do that. Skips, apparently. No, he's good. Bob the builder there. He's alright. Let's have a look. What's he doing? No, he's alright as well. Oh, could we go for a clear, clear, clean sheet? After 300 feet, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A326. 300 feet to go. Okay, Audi driver coming up.
we're under a clean sheet. But they're gonna try and get where I'm get, trying to go. Yeah. Where you expect me all to go? It's you that the boys have got to merge in. Yeah, well, nobody was on their phone. Clean sheet, well done. Right. I'm going to enjoy the traffic and drink some more coffee because I've got a bit of a coffee thirst on. Oh, he was a bit close. Right, we will. Oh, we're picking up a bit of speed. Traffic on M3, E05, traffic jam ahead, between A335 Lee Road and A335 Albrook Way, 2 minutes delay. Slow traffic on A326, traffic jam ahead, between Mellors Lane and Fletchwood Road, 2 minutes delay. You get all that? It's like I always say, that's fine if you know where those roads are. But when you don't, it's like you may as well not bother. You just tell me there's a up ahead, there's a there's a traffic jam because I don't. That's that's all right if it's a local and you're local and you know the the road layout and you know the road names. But vast majority of the time, he had a walking stick strapped to his back. Did I did I see the crack on that bloke on a motorbike? What was I saying? Nine hundred feet. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A three hundred and twenty six. I've no idea. Gone. Right. I'll speak to you all later on. Hello. Um, just listening to the news there, and I thought, oh, hang on a minute. I mean, obviously, this is going to be a few days late, so it's going to be old news, and more facts may emerge as to what's happening. All, but there was trouble for those of you that don't know and those of you that are abroad there were some riots in Cardiff um, on a council estate um, known as a deprived area not that that has anything to do with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with anything um, but two young lads lost their lives because they were, they were involved in a fatal car accident right? the two lads were 15 and 16 I believe they were the only two lads in the car. So one of them was driving. 15 and 16. Slow traffic on M3, E05. Okay. Traffic jam ahead. Between no. A335 Lee Road and a 3090 Hockey Link. Four minutes delay. Yeah, thank you. So that's, you know, you got that, you know, 15 and 16. What were they doing in a car? Right. The next thing is, the police are under scrutiny because apparently what happened was was that the riots occurred because allegedly they were being chased by the police and as a result the two young lads died now I'm uncomfortable with this for a number of reasons not because the police were chasing them though which is what seems to be the this is where the anger was was uh, came from and why the riot started apparently through social media whether they got the facts wrong I don't know but either way even if they were being chased by the police 
they're under you know the police operate under strict strict guidelines for for chasing police especially in built up areas but that doesn't mean that the criminals are going to adhere to that just because the police may ease off doesn't mean that the criminals are they're going to carry on driving like loons aren't they because they want to get away so what are the police meant to do you know they get criticized for not catching criminals but they can't chase them anymore. What are they supposed to do? Put a notice in the fucking paper. Oh, please, can you give yourselves up and slow down a little bit? Oh, my giddy on. I think people need to get a grip on reality here. If you do something bad, expect to get caught and expect to get some punishment. We've gone fucking soft, we have. We really have. No, I'm not right wing. Well, I suppose I am a little bit. But do you know what I mean? It, it, this, this. For people to turn around and criticise the police for chasing criminals, they didn't know they were 15 and 16. Before they knew they were armed. I don't know. They don't know. Well, you know, what does a policeman do? He gets bad people off the off the off the streets. That's what they do. They do the shitty jobs that most normal people wouldn't want to do. Having to deal with shysters and criminals and badass people on a daily basis for what so that when they when they chase someone they get criticized if the criminals happen to you know get killed in there as a result of their own actions it's not the police's fault that they died because they were being chased well you let them get away then well you could you could you could apply the same philosophy for everything that a criminal does can't chase after him you can't track them down because if they hurt themselves in any way shape or form like get a splinter whilst they're jumping out of a fucking window or twist an ankle oh no that's the police's fault so they're putting a claim against them oh do fuck off we've gone soft we really have oh, it just annoys me immensely the boys and girls in blue they've got a shitty job and I've got mates that are ex-coppers, you know, and thankfully they're out there and retired. And they've done well, they've gone up through the ranks. And, um, I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they did it. The bureaucracy and bullshit is absolutely staggering. Now, we should be thanking the old, you know, the, the boys, the boys, these boys and girls in blue. We should really be thanking them, not giving them a hard time for chasing badass people. It so happens that these two lads were 15 and 16. Well, okay, they were 15 and 16, and, and whilst it's a shame that anybody loses their lives, doesn't matter whether they're 15 or 16 or 50 or 60, it makes no odds if you break the law. You've got to deal with the consequences. They died out of their own stupidity. That is that is it. That's not because the police were chasing them. It's because they decided it would be a good idea to get in a car. Now, I don't know whether the car was stolen or not, but they both decided to get in a car and drive it at speed with very or no experience. Well... I'm sorry and it may seem, seem harsh but well that's <laughs> it's not a video game is it you know it's not a video game you don't get an extra life if you die oh jump back up I'll start that game again I'll, I'll just re refresh start the game again I'll play on no index piss me off there was no need for them and, and, and saying that they come for you know it was done in a run down area in a deprived area that, that makes no odds it makes no odds what else are they meant to do well, well <laughs> there's lots they could do you're telling me that everyone comes from a deprived area turns out a rotten apple you know it turns out rotten apple it doesn't some of the best people in the world come from deprived out, of, you know, that have carved out a future for themselves out of the deprived areas because they want to do better and they want to they want to get ahead. But you've got to want to have that. 
have that drive or passion to do something with your life. What do they think was going to happen? Stealing a, or, or whether they stole a car, or, or drive, just for the fact they were driving. What do they think was going to happen? Especially if they put their foot down to try and get away. Well, what, what outcome were they, th what were they thinking of? And it, tr the trouble is, 15 and 16 year old lads don't think. That's, this is the bottom line, they don't think. And that doesn't matter whether you come from a deprived background or you were born with a silver spoon stuck up your ass. Makes no odds. 15 and 16 year old lads don't don't think. I know, because I was a 15 year old once. Believe it or not, like many of you. And did you think? No, because I certainly didn't. <laughs> but I didn't go around driving cars at 15 or 16. So I knew deep down that that was not a clever idea. You know, I had that sort of little bit of sense about me. So where does it all go wrong? Who's to blame on all of this? Now, some people can say, oh, it's the parents. You know, they were feral kids. Maybe they were. Maybe they come from broken homes. Well, a lot of people come from broken homes. It's a fact of life. Don't mean you start going around nicking cars. You know, it's, it's very easy to blame society. Now, who's, who's, whose fault is it? Oh, there's nothing for the poor minds to do in the evenings. Well. When I was a kid, we didn't have a great deal to do, but we didn't go around nicking cars or driving cars. You know, I wouldn't say we were angels, but, you know. I've got my fair share of hijinks, I can tell you, but, you know, the same yardstick. I wasn't risking life and limb, apart from falling out of a tree or on the odd occasion. Apart from that, you know, we weren't going out on the bob. I don't know. Personally, I've got this own, my own personal view where it all went wrong. And it's now a generational thing and now it's too late. Because they're never going to bring it back. And that was when they abolished, they stopped using the cane at school. And they started calling teachers by their first names and all that, you know, all that. I don't like using the word sissification, but do you know what I mean? It's like, because I've got, you know, I don't care if you're a sissy or not. I don't care, it doesn't bother me. You could be the, you know, I've got gay, plenty of gay friends. Don't bother me in the slightest. It makes no odds to me what, whatsoever. But there are some right fannies about, aren't there? Do you know what I mean? Oh, we can't tell them off anymore. Well, look what happens when you don't tell them off. They don't know the difference between right and wrong because no one's bloody telling them. They're too scared to tell them because then they get reported to the bloody child line. And before you know it, the teacher that was a really good teacher is on a disciplinary and he goes, do you know what? Oh, fuck it, I'm going to become a bin man. Yeah. There's a girl on YouTube, Hayley. She, um, she was a teacher. She jacked it in, become a truck driver. So she does that, and now she teaches CPC. So she's she obviously has got that feel for, for teaching. And um, you know, and she, she, you know, she's pretty good at it. So it it, it 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 figures that you know to teach CPC. And uh, you know, you're still dealing with big kids in your truck drivers, but just big kids really. <laughs> but. but you know, most of us are at an age where <laughs> if she came in with a big cane, you'd like you you'd sort of sit up and listen a bit more, I reckon. Do you know what I mean? It's like I had respect for my teachers. 
kids today they have no respect for their teachers they, have, they don't even have any respect for the police anymore yeah no respect no respect for their elders no respect for their parents you know and as kids we all knew we all knew better than our parents didn't we we all knew better all of us you know oh, what does mum and dad know they know nothing well of course they did but as a teenager you think that don't you, you think, oh yeah I know I know what I can do I know what's best for me well most of the time you don't but you like to think you do but if you said anything out of line it would be like a clip around the ear or a wooden spoon across the back of the head teachers throwing blackboard rubbers at you or some serious misdemeanor like you'd get either detention or you'd get um get a cane yeah. I don't know. We've gone soft, haven't we? We have gone soft. And that's 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 the problem. We've gone soft and now we have. The generation that have, uh, that have produced spawning kids that are absent, that are feral. Because the parents are feral, they have no respect for the police, they think it's alright to throw bricks and stones. They bring their kids out to think that's alright because they hear their dads mouthing off, oh bloody police. What are they going to catch real criminals? Well, the thing is. They start off with petty crime and then they become real criminals. Bloody hell, this truck is slow, isn't she? She's heavy. Look at this. 25 mile on there. Come on, go. We need to start making. It's like I always say, if you can't, if, if you're prepared to do the crime, you're prepared to do the time, aren't you? You know, that's all right. There's always been bad boys in there, bad boys and bad girls. There's always bad people out there. It's a different game altogether these days. Nobody really cares what I think. But, uh, we're never, and, and the trouble is, we're never going to do anything about it. It ain't going to get any After better because. Miles, take the exit nine, towards Newbury. There'll be already, all, always be some far lefty going, oh, you can't infringe on their, on their liberties. Or what, liberties to steal cars and kill themselves? I think we should. They've never been in trouble before. Well, that's probably because they've never been caught before. Because there aren't enough police on the streets. Because it was deemed that we don't need them. We need to sit people down and have a cup of tea with them and have a cup, you know, have a have a chocolate flake with them, you know, and talk to them about the errors of that ways. And they're just going to yawn and go oh, fuck off, mate, will you? I'm going out on a mob later. Yeah, a cup of tea and a slice of cake ain't going to do nothing for no one. But we're not going to go back, are we? We're not going to go back to that. We're not going to go back. We're not going to go back to um, being a bit hard line. Oh, there's a fan up there. I hope he pulls in, he does. See, people leave it so late. See how many people barge in. I'll, I'll leave you on until I get past this roundabout. 
Yeah, I've had to turn the I had to turn the news off. It was pissing me off. They were they were in they were um. It was almost like the BBC reporter was interrogating. Take the exit. The uh, crime commissioner for South Wales and give him a hard time for the police doing their job, which is trying to catch criminals. Saying and and oh, it just I had to turn it off because it's just doing my head You know, insinuating that the police were somehow to fault to be at fault. No, not at all. They decided to wrap themselves around a fence post or a telegraph pole or whatever it was that they ended up accident killing themselves. Then, tragic as it is, the only people they got to blame is each other. Again, it sounds harsh, and I might get a bit of hate for it, but you know, Too bloody soft. After a quarter of a mile, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A34, towards Newbury. Yeah, nice and quiet. Let's see if the lights change though. Be prepared, stop. Slow down, slow down, slow cross down. Cross the roundabout down. and take the second exit. Yeah, there you go. I can stop on that one. Yeah, for people on my left now. Now I'm going to be slow away here. So there is a chance of people going round to the left of me. There's plenty there. Doesn't look like it. No. Take the exit, A34, Winchester Bypass. We're all gravy. No, we're not, we're all Gucci. It's all gravy, baby. It's all Gucci. What a shitty saying that is. After three quarters of a mile, keep left. I don't even like bloody Gucci. We are off. After half a mile, keep left. I'll speak to you all later on. Hello. Right, I decided to take a break. Uh, told the office I'd be there when I get there. And they were perfectly happy with that. So I want to get there about. 10 past 12 and I said I'll be there by a battle pass so uh, in the bag. Blimey, it's warm. I just took a 45 because it's gonna by the time I got there it would be um close on four and a half hours of drive time. If I have to do a shunt or anything like that when I get there, a bit of you know, it's um causes me a bit of a problem. So I needed to stop to go to the toilet anyway, so I just said I was going to be late, traffic's been a nightmare, it was too close to call. Six hundred feet, turn left. Taking the break. Got something to eat, have some lunch. Even though it's only 1042 at 16 degrees. Turn left. Turn left. So for those eagle-eyed, Chilwell Valley. A whole load of roundabouts to get through now. Up the M1, cut the junctions and be there six to six miles away. So not far. Tell we're heavy, we've only managed seven miles of the gallon so far today.
We're not doing too well on the old fuel economy today. Diesel 179, that's come down. 20p a litre. Bad bloody time. After 600 feet, keep right, then bear left. Oh, I see no bears. Keep right, then bear left. No, well, not really. Oh, aircon, start working. Come on. Bear left, A43, then turn, turn right. T turn, turn right? Sand Yorkshire like. T turn right. Down lane, I think I can. Okay. Alright, this is tip over corner here. Let's take it nice and gentle. After half a mile, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A43. Really upset the layout of my cab to go over it. Away we go. Right, I'll speak to you all. Probably. Yeah, probably as I come off the motorway. I'll speak to you all in a bit.